ready for the story to pick up? All right, here we go. So Mary Jo went in as soon as we pulled up to Laird Hot Springs and she ran in. Um, I was laying on the back of the van and covered in sleeping bags and whatever else. Um, we had EB with us and um, also the fun part, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's fun, but this is where it started to help me realize that it wasn't just us along this um, experience, but Austin had um, jumped in the back seat and or in the back with me and, and was basically doing a check on me and he's like, "What? tell me what you need, tell me what you need and I kept thinking I was bleeding to death in my legs and so I said I need to tie off my legs for a bit. I, I know I couldn't leave it for long but I had to at least, if my if I was bleeding out anywhere it would have been my legs and so he had um, pulled off his tank top and split it in half and had tied above my knee on both legs um, because I didn't know what what the blood um, what the bleeding looked like I had blood enough that it glued my shoe to my foot um, I learned when I got run over that the tail or the um, hitch from that from the thing that we were carrying was low enough to the ground but my foot was in the way or my my ankle was in the way and it ripped it open punctured both ends of my my ankle and I had been bleeding you know pretty good out my ankle and then Austin yeah he was like well, what else do you need what else do you need and all I kept thinking was if I'm gonna die <laughs> please pray and and ask that I'd either go quick or whatever um, and in our faith we believe that you can um, use the power of the priesthood to give a blessing and um, we believe that Jesus Christ used this power um, when he was here upon the earth a lot of the miracles were based on the priesthood power but um, anyways I asked Austin if he would give me a blessing and I figured I would either be told that I was going to die or <laughs> whatever. And um, it didn't. It basically said that I would be strong through it and that I would recover. And, and I, d I think I just needed to hear that to be able to keep moving forward. Even though it was my huge mistake. Um, stupid mistake. Anyways, Mary Jo had come back out and basically had said that the ambulance is on their way and that they would be there in four hours. Four hours, four hours. But we were basically stranded at this point. And um, we tried, you know, we I think we had a Snickers bar, but we basically wrapped everybody up in the blankets and just waited, fell asleep. Um, dozed in and out, waited. Um, Theron and Bridger, luckily this was in the middle of the night, so they would normally have been sleeping. But um, finally when the ambulance came, um, Mary Jo had packed, had a bag and put my laptop and stuff in there. And um, EB had I got a, a doctor's note to have EB as my service dog <laughs> for my anxiety and I had gotten a letter a doctor's note for that and so we had basically um, that moment I was pulled out of the van and put on a stretcher it was excruciating the pain was unbearable um, and we left my van up there on the side of the hill parked in the middle of this <laughs> parking lot or whatever and we all got into the ambulance um, the kids were in the back Mary Jo was in the front and the dog was up front I think up front or maybe she was laying on top of me anyways I don't remember but did you know in Canada they don't give you any type of morphine or anything in an ambulance they gave me laughing gas what Anyways, it did nothing, um, but I could tell you whether we were going left or right or down a hill or up a hill when we hit the brakes, um, but they missed a ton of um, herds of elk and 
more bison and all kinds of things that took them a while because they didn't get there in four hours. I think it was like four and a half or something. Um, they didn't send a helicopter because the helicopter, um, whoever was trained, was not working or something. Usually, and later we found out that people that get hit by bison usually don't call for help, they die. Um, so the fact that we were all okay and, and stuff was awesome. It was a miracle. But anyways, four hours down the mountain, at this time it had been at least nine hours before we had gotten to the hospital. Um, swelling had set in. Uh, as soon as we got in there, uh, I went back to x-ray and the lady was a beast. She was such a jerk. Anyway, every tiny move that was going on, she was just cramp jamming my legs around and stuff. My It was so excruciating, I can't even begin to tell you um, the pain that I was in at this point. But um, I was also hypoglycemic um, at the time, and so going without food was um, a huge problem. That's probably part of the reason why I had uh, made the choice I made. My judgment was a little bit cloudy, apparently. She kept on, she's like, I don't know why you're whining. She's like, your legs aren't even broken. Like, she was a beast, too. It was ridiculous. And I was like, I kept thinking, this x-ray machine's got to be broken because there's no way. I just went through what I did, and I didn't break my legs. There's no way. Anyways, um, my legs just began to swell and swell. Um, I remember through that whole ordeal, um, Geico was our agent or our insurance and they were a piece of garbage to work with. I had to put Mary Jo on my insurance so that they would talk to her <clears throat> and take care of She could talk to the medical side of everything. Um, during this whole thing, my family had found out Mary Jo had talked to, I think Ross and Ross had called Jake and Jake, I had Jake's passport, so there was no getting him up to help us. Um, he was stranded. He couldn't cross the border without a passport. Um, but in the meantime, basically, <clears throat> yeah, I had a meltdown in the in the ER, and Mary Jo was like, "Just get her some food." And I, because this got this doctor. He didn't even clean my foot out. Like, he just stitched that up. It was ridiculous. And um, there was, like, oil and dirt and all kinds of stuff jammed in there. And <laughs> he just stitched it up. Anyways, he was he was kind of a jerk. The doctor was like, if you're, if you're going to be like this or whatever. And I'm like, just give me some freaking food. I was hysterical. I'll give you that. I was hysterical. And they brought me some orange juice. And sure enough, the second that I got food... I could function. It was ridiculous. Anyways, so I um, we got to the hotel. We ended up um, getting a hotel or whatever. And for five days, I was stranded. The bigger my legs would get. In fact, I'll post some of these pictures right here. But as, you know, the, the days had gone on, um, I had crutches and my shoulder was dislocated. It popped back in in the, in the, um, in the ambulance. When I had rotated or turned over, it popped back in. My shoulder, it was in some serious pain. My legs were in pain and I couldn't even put weight on my legs at all. It was ridiculous. They were swollen like he, somebody had blown them up with a like with a balloon. When we got to the hotel, um, I knew to look on the phone for the zip code, and then I want, went on to LDS.org, uh, which is a Mormon website because we are Mormons, you know. 
So I went in and found the bishop in the area and I called him. At this time when we finally got out of the hospital, it was close to, I don't know, it was, I don't know, three o'clock in the afternoon or something. But um, I don't even remember the time. But anyhow, when we got there, I literally called the bishop and told him what happened and that we needed help getting home. And basically, um, Mary Jo, our theory was to go, she would go down four hours away from us, eight hours from our van, and she would go buy a, a van and come back and get us, basically. Um, but later, when she got there, learned that because we were U.S. citizens, they would not let us buy a vehicle. <laughs> anyway, so the next step was to, she got a hold of um, GEICO and Enterprise, and we could rent a van, but we couldn't take it over the border. We couldn't rent a van where we were currently at because the cars that are rented in that area have to be returned to that area. So it was like, I felt like we were in an episode of Lost. It was ridiculous. Anyways, in the meantime, the kids would play down at the pool and I was stuck in bed with my legs swollen. It was great. It was a great time. Five days of this. Eating at the pizzeria for every meal. It was great. <laughs> Anyways, um, so long story short, uh, Mary Jo got a van and the bishop sent up somebody in the church and he drove up with his with the bishop's son's truck drove up four hours to come get us we met um, long story short the tow truck had been he'd done this before and the tow truck actually went up and got my van off the mountain um, the guy that came to get us didn't know us from anyone um, anyways so when we went and picked it up Austin and the guy unloaded our van in the back of this truck we drove all the way four hours my legs swelled and swelled and swelled the whole time even worse um, and we stayed at the bishop's house and then Mary Jo got back we loaded up and we headed out we met Mary Jo's um, father-in-law who was the only one in the family that had a passport um, and we met him at the border basically and he drove us to Pocatello. <sighs> over the over the next couple years here, um, it's been three years, and I still um, cannot stand on my legs for long periods of time. My legs still swell; they throb. I can't run. I can't stomp. I can't any. If it's too really cold, um, just to walk. The vibration through my legs. Having a crushing injury is worse than a break and it was true that x-ray machine in Canada was not broken um, I got an x-ray as soon as I got back and I did not break anything um, I was on antibiotics I had an started an infection but was able to get ahead of that um, this accident happened on a Monday October 21st okay um, literally a week later Austin was t-boned in Jake's mom's car. Austin refused to drive on Mondays for a long time. Um, remember, he's the one driving. But anyways, um, this basically is the shortened down version of what happened in three vlogs. So yeah, I dislocated my shoulder. A year of PT, physical therapy, um, and surgery, and another six months. Um, I now can move my arm. I dislocated it and tore some of the ten not the tendons completely, but I had definitely um, messed up my shoulder in that little moment. But um, I'm not all the way back. I can't work in the operating room anymore. That's kind of where we're at. But thank you so much for watching this crazy story. Um, tell me what you think. Would you have done something different? Maybe eaten or stopped and didn't drive at night? I don't know. I replay this night every all the time. Thanks for watching, you guys. Stay limey and awesome. We'll talk to you guys later.